Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Live and on the air. Sponsor tonight is John Jones. John Jones Real Estate. Nobody sells homes like John. We're going to go down to Chattanooga. Going to talk to a coach that's sitting at 490 wins, folks. He's in the National Hall of Fame. He coaches at Boyd Buchanan. Head coach Gary Rankin. How you doing tonight, coach? Doing good. Thank you. Well, congratulations. 490, 10 away from the big one, uh, 500. Uh, but, uh, you know, but uh, uh, that's not the big story. The big story is Boyd's at 4 and 0 oh and uh, came away with a big win Friday night. We did. Uh, you know, we had them outmanned a little bit, but our kids took care of what we were supposed to take care of. And, you know, we were happy. We got to play a lot of kids, and that's always satisfying to me when I get a lot of guys playing time so that was good and uh, we got out of there healthy so uh, we'll see uh, you know if we can get ready for this week a good Silverdale team well and uh, you know before we move on to Silverdale uh, you know and even though you got them out man and everything when you got those twos and threes in there and those other guys I mean uh, and you you know and and it starts to settle down after your guys, like you said, your starters had, had put the game away. How'd they look? Oh, they look good. You know, it was almost a, an extra JV game for them. We got to play our – we got to pull our starters at halftime and we got to play young kids the whole second half. So, like I say, that's always one of my objectives and try to get kids some good experience and stuff. And there's nothing like playing on – you know, you play your JV games, but – they're still not like getting them in on Friday night if they can. So uh, we got a lot of kids in. They had a good time. Uh, some of them did some really good things when they were in there, so it went good. Well, and uh, always a special place playing at Boyd. I'm sure you had a big crowd. How would your special teams do, Coach? Had a big crowd. Special teams were good. Our kickoff guy, Ethan Lane, is putting everything in the end zone. Uh, probably 95 98% of his kicks are going in the end zone. That's always a big help in high school. Uh, when you can make them start and go a long way. So, kicking game was good. It was just a good night for us. So, as you move forward and everything, uh, you, you was wanting to work on those penalties and just cleaning up that, and that was a, that was something that was on your mind in the first couple of games, and it was just, you know, you talked about them being the post game and the pre, pre-snap pre penalties and so on and so forth. How did we do in, you know, getting that kind of, kind of straightened up? Yeah, yeah. We had a few runners this week, but not too bad. And, uh, you know, you're going to have some penalties from time to time. And some of them were effort penalties, and I'm good with those. Uh, but we got some of that cleaned up, and I don't think we had any turnovers. So it was a pretty clean game for us. Yeah, and, you know, you've always been a proponent of that, that, you know, you're not – you don't – you don't really, you know, as long as the kids are going hard and going fast, that's been a that's been a trademark of your ball clubs all throughout. Uh, yeah, and I mean, we've done a good job with that. I mean, you know, penalties and turnovers, I mean, they'll, center layer, they'll catch up with you and you'll lose a ball game. So uh, we're pretty adamant about those kind of things. And, you know, we've done a decent job of protecting the football so far and not having a lot of negative plays. So, we're working towards doing the things that it takes to win games, and I think we're getting closer to getting to that point. As you said, at this point of the season, you know, you guys, uh, you know, to go all the way or to get to that big one, that, that, that takes 14, but you got 10 in front of you. You know, you're guaranteed 10 and everything, and as you sit right here where you are, and, you know, you're going to be in the region play here real soon and, and, and so forth, and as we talk about silver and, and, and you know, what – what what do you, what do you got to do? I mean, you got to stay healthy, and I mean, you know, you know, give us a little right. bit of that recipe. Take well, it away. I mean, every game we got left is a recent game, so it's coming on us pretty strong and pretty stout each week. Uh, you know, you got to try to stay healthy for sure. I mean, we're like every other smaller school; we don't have a whole lot of depth in places, so you try to be smart with that. But you never know when you're going to lose somebody, so always trying to build depth. Uh, and, and making sure we're well prepared in all phases of the game. You know, there's somewhere you can always get better each week. And, uh, you know, our kicking game is something we're trying to approach a little bit more and, and try to get a little bit better with all that. So, uh, you know, it's just uh, trying to get better. I mean, I think that's one thing you got to understand as the season goes on. And it's getting to about that point. Sometimes it's sixth or seventh week. Teams get better, they get worse. 
Really? And, uh, we, we, so we want to be one of those teams. So teams you that get better. Some of, them, some of them start going downhill. They maybe not going to win the region. They're not going to certain things are not going to happen. So you know, you get to that time where you keep building, keep going up, or you start staying where you are. You start sliding backwards. So you've, uh, you know, in, in that, that is interesting you say that, that you'll notice that uh, over the years you've coached that, uh, you know, if it gets to week seven and uh, the team doesn't think they're going to the playoffs, sometimes they'll give up early. And uh, that's just only, a, I mean, nothing nothing don't, being mean, but it's just an opportunity for you. Don't, don't, don't practice as well. You know, the things are some of their goals they might have, uh, that I may have got away from them and, you know, some of those kids are playing basketball and they're starting to practice a little bit. So, so many things happen, especially if things aren't going good for you. So, I mean, I think, and I'm pretty proud of the situation that I think we've always gotten better with our teams. Uh, a lot of a lot of kids, a lot of kids, a lot of coaches, I think, get away from just basic fundamentals. I mean, we were blocking and tackling every day, and we'll continue to do that uh, until we get beat. So. I think fundamentals and doing the things that win games for you, some coaches get away from a little bit of that as, as they get into the season, and that's not the way that I do it. Coach, uh, you know, and uh, I've, 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 seen, I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen in basketball. I've been a part of teams where I've seen a, a, a kid turn in his uniform in the middle of the season or something like that and, and everything. Uh, uh, question, you know, uh, when that happens, what is what is your first instinct? I mean, of course, you look at the kid and understand, but you, you always want to try to. You, you've always been a great leader in trying to spin him back around. I mean, what's what's the first thing you say? I mean, do you say have you talked over with your parents or what, what? What? How do you approach that? Well, first and foremost, I, I haven't had it happen much because we've been winning. You know, when you're winning, you don't have those kind of problems sometimes. So, I guess I've been fortunate enough that. We've been going pretty good. And we've really really not had a lot of kids quit during the season uh, because of the success we've had. Now, we've had some kids quit in the off season and during the summer workouts and when all that hard work's going on. But most of the time when we get our season going, and like I say, I've been fortunate or lucky, however you want to put it, uh, to be on a winning side of some of, a lot of those games. And uh, it's been fun to be a part of, and you don't lose as many kids. And, and great point, great point. Well, you're going to rush in the silver, and uh, they're three and one. This is a this is a great game for you right now. You're catching this great, right great where game. you want it. You, I mean, this great. is you, you're juicy. You great. like this one. Great game. There's a, it's probably the biggest rivalry. The board Silverdale is probably the biggest rivalry on our schedule, and that's not just football. That's school wise with all sports. So it's a lively game. Uh, Coach Connor does a great job with his program. Uh, those kids are well coached. They're well drilled, uh, and it, it's going to be a heck of a game. I mean, they beat. Uh, I think they beat Webb the other night. They've upset a couple of people, uh, beat CCS and beat Webb, and that's two teams that really just wore them out last year. So uh, they're trying to get back at everybody, and we're we're next up for them, I guess. But uh, should be a tremendous game. Like I say, they've got a good program. Uh, got a lot of respect for their coaches and the way they do things, and uh, it's a huge region game for both teams. Well, Coach, we wish you the best of luck. Uh, we hope you're doing well, and I can't thank you enough for being on the Inside the Headset. You're welcome, buddy. Appreciate your help. All righty. See you. Bye.